Hey there, good morning. Welcome to the Morning Watch. It is Monday, January the 18th, 2021. Uh, national holiday today, MLK Jr.'s birthday. So that's exciting. A lot of people have today off work and various things. Some people do, some people don't. I'm gonna, I'm working today, so excited about that. Getting, getting my week started. Hope you're well, hope you rested well. There's my sister, there's Peggy. So today we're going to be finishing up Second Peter. Um, again, it was only three chapters long, very short book, but yet very, very good. Very, very important, um, powerful stuff for us to, to chime into. So let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer, and then we will, there's my mom, and then we will, we'll jump into our reading today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your cross. Lord, this morning, in the quietness of the morning, we just pray that you would open up our minds, our hearts, uh, our souls, Lord, to be able to uh, learn from your scripture today what you would have us to learn. Lord, we, we love you so much. You've given us so much. You're so faithful. Lord, we're just thankful that our Salvation is held secure by you, not us, and we just, uh, we're so thankful that you made a way for us. Lord, be with the sick this morning. There's so many people that are struggling with, with the virus and other things. Lord, we pray that you would be with them, that you would take care of them and heal them. Lord, we love you this morning. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, there's Carrie and Lorene and Kim and Kim. All right. So 2 Peter chapter 3, let's read this. This is only this is 18 verses, and then we'll unpack it a little bit. He says, he says, this is my second letter to you, dear friends. And in both of them, I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the Holy Prophet said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command, and he brought the earth out of the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They're being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But, you must not forget one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we're looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you're waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom of God gave him. 
speaking of these things in all of his letters. Some of his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture, and this will result in their destruction. You already know these things, dear friends, so be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose their own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. So Peter begins chapter 3, continuing this theme of false teachers. Here he talks about, he says, he starts out with chapter 3 saying, this is my second letter. And this is really the last words that we ever have record of Peter writing. And he says, I am, in both of them, I've tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. Stimulate your wholesome thinking. How do you do that? How do, you, how do we stimulate our wholesome thinking? We do it by thinking about things that are above. Thinking about the Lord. Spending our time meditating on his word. Stimulating wholesome thinking. And refreshing our memory. You know, there, there are really two different kinds of memory in regard to your spiritual walk. The first one the enemy can use against us by saying, Oh, look, you're not worth anything. Look what you've done. Look at all the things that you've done. You're unforgivable. The enemy will use that if you're, if you're not careful. But as a believer, we can look back and see the hand of God in our lives to say, Look at how he's, why would I ever expect him to not be faithful? He's been faithful in this and this and this. Of course he's going to be faithful in this new situation. So refreshing our memory is very important. And he says, I want you to remember what the Holy Prophets said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. This is speaking about the Word of God that we too, Peter, Peter said, don't forget what they said. Don't forget the things that they've taught us very important then he goes on to talk about these scoffers these people that will say things like um, uh, in verse 4 what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again he's not come back yet Peter's very careful to tell us that we don't understand time the way we need to understand it he says if he says uh, as a follow-up to that question from before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world's been created. More of the scoffing. Okay, These are the kind of things that these scoffers say. They cast doubt into the minds of believers. They try to, to say, oh, this isn't going to happen. Jesus isn't going to return again. Peter's like, yes, he is. He says, he's, and then verse 5 and 6 and 7. He, Peter gives us a little bit of a history lesson. He talks about creation. He talks about the flood. He talks about all of these things. He says, the last part of verse 7 is, is, is uh, very serious. It says, they're being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. And the present heaven and earth will. It's been stored up for fire, it says. Verse 8, but don't forget this one thing, dear friends. And this is really speaking to He's speaking to the network of churches uh, during his world, but he's also speaking to you and I as his dear friends, and we can't forget it either. He says, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a year is like a thousand days. So what's he saying there? Well, a lot of times we'll think, we'll think you know, I'll, my entire life I've heard people say we're living in the last days. We have to understand that time is not, for the Lord is not the same as it is for us. It is true. God could come. Jesus could return at any day. He could return before we finish our time together this morning. But we can't be concerned about when he's coming. But we have to be concerned about the fact that he is coming. And he says he's being patient for our sake. You know, one of these days. One of these days. God the Father is going to turn to God the Son and say, go get them. Go get our children. Are you ready? That's the, that's the thing. 
He says he doesn't want anybody to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. He says he's patient. He's patient. Will every person come to know Christ? No. No. The Bible's clear of that. You know people yourself who did not. But the thing is, it's not, God does not want anybody to be destroyed. He's offering up this gift, this free gift of salvation to anyone who would come to him. And he says, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, very unexpectedly. You know, no one who gets robbed ever thinks, well, I expected this. No, you're taken by surprise. The return of Jesus will be that way. It will be unexpected. <clears throat> Verses 10 and 11 and 12 and 13, for that matter, talks about what will happen, the new heaven, the new earth. And he says here, listen to this. He says, on verse 11, since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. So the fact that we know what's going to happen should motivate us as followers of Jesus to live lives that are holy and godly. And he says, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. How do we hurry it along? You ever think about that? How do we do that? Living exactly the way God wants us to live. We hurry it along. And he says, verse 13, we're looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. Amen. And look at for, verse 14. It kind of talks about our role in this. He says, and so, dear friends, while you're waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Make every effort. We own some of this. To live lives responsibly that reflect the character of, and the mercy and grace and forgiveness that God has given us. And he says, remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. But there'll come a time when there is no more grace. We're living in a time of grace right now. He said, this is what Paul wrote too, but people didn't understand him. He said, he said it's important to not twist Scripture in verse 16. He said, this will result in our frustration." So it's important that we don't take scripture and warp it and pervert it to meet our needs. Okay? It's, it's uh, destruction is hanging in the balance. He says, you already know these things, Peter says. Last words of Peter. So be on guard so you won't be carried away by the errors of these wicked people, these scoffers, and lose your own secure footing. We can't let that happen. He says, rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of your Lord Jesus Christ. How do you do that? By knowing scripture, by spending time in prayer, by spending time with other brothers and sisters in Christ, being encouraged, doing the things that we know that we need to do to, as he said in verse 11, live those holy and godly lives that we should live. And they all glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. Peter finishes very strong, very strong. So tomorrow we're going to start in 1 John, which is uh, five chapters. And this is written by the Apostle John, who also wrote the Gospel of John. He also wrote 2nd and 3rd John and Revelation. Tremendous, tremendous stuff. So I uh, hope you're looking forward to that. I sure am. Morning, uh, morning Charles and Kim and Chris. Hope you guys have a blessed day. <clears throat> it's Monday. It's a new day. It's a new week. But it's full of opportunities for us to serve our Lord. Full of opportunities for us to love each other. To serve each other. And so, uh, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll we'll be about our about our Monday. Pray for my good friend Chris this morning. Getting some uh, test run and up there in Cleveland. Hope he's doing well. Please pray. Pray for the uh, for Rick McKitty. Uh, Rick is in the hospital here in Corbin with the virus. Uh, very sick man. I would pray that you would please pray for him and his wife Christy and their family. Um, needs a touch from the Lord for sure. Uh, let's pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this day. 
Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that we would live lives that reflect that holiness that you would that you've called us to live through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. Be blessed, Brian. Y'all have a great day. Love you. I'll see you tomorrow.